Hi, I'm Nico. I am really excited to walk you through my new BBCS for Cubase template, which you can download right now at the link below. So let's see how this works and how you can use it. All right, so the first time that you open this template, this is what you are going to see. It is not impossible that you get an error message telling you that your audio output is not configured or that your MIDI keyboard cannot be found. This is not... Uh, you know, th this is not really an issue. It is just because the project was saved with my setup, so it is not impossible that there are still references to my audio card or to my MIDI keyboard. So just go into your settings and update that for the template, resave it on top of it, and you are good to go. Right, so how is this template constructed? First of all, if we open the top part here in Cubase, we have some group buses like the section groups and the, the, the effects groups like the delay and uh, different reverbs. We also have the, the, what I call the master groups where you have the mix and master bus. We will look at this section in more detail once we take a look at the mix console. It will be much easier to explain how this works. But the template itself where you, you get to, to write music is here. At the top, I've inserted a timecode. Uh, uh, track so that you can see where in your current time code you are uh, you are at. It's very useful when doing scoring. You will notice that the project by default starts at bar uh, 101 instead of starting at bar 1 because that's the way I work, I always start my projects at bar 101 because I use all that part before for sketching. You have, of course, a tempo track, so you can change the tempo while uh, the project is playing. You have the signature track. You have a marker track. If I open it a bit better, you will see that this marker track is currently set as a musical mode, but you have a second marker track that I call hit points that is set as linear mode. And this is really useful again for scoring when you are using the, the time warp tool to, to hit certain uh, so certain points in the film. Anyway, if you are not doing scoring, you can no problem 
just remove these two tracks, you can delete them, the timecode and the hit points. Then we have two sections. If I close them, you can see that you have sketch and below we have track. In sketch, we have the core track where you can set some chords and the, the chords tone will be output to this chords out track. So if you mute this, you don't hear the chords playing. You can also, of course, obviously just mute the chord track itself. Then we have just a piano patch for sketching. I don't know what piano is currently installed on your machine. So what I did is just, I just took the basic uh, piano from, uh, from Cubase. It runs in uh, Halion Sonic. It's the special edition, which is provided with Cubase. So you should have it on your computer anyway. Uh, it is not a great piano. Let's not, uh, <laughs> let's not have the, the wrong expectations here. So what you can do is just go here and you can just choose another piano that you currently have installed on your computer. And here there are two disabled tracks. They are also piano tracks for sketching. Why three? <clears throat> Again, this is due to the way I work. I usually write the, the harmony, the chords on the piano sketch one track. I write the melody on the piano sketch two track. And sometimes I write some decorations like ostinatos or bass line or whatever on a third piano patch. These, of course, in the sketching part of the template are, uh, is not made for your final track. Where you will be writing the music, it's here inside the track folder. And you can see that we already have some folders, piano, strings, woodwinds, and so on and so forth. So, for example, if I open the piano, we have two disabled tracks here. I can enable one. And again, I've used this uh, Halion Sonic piano, which is not great. So one of the first thing you can do when working with this template is change the piano. But as you know it, BBCSO doesn't have a piano. And so I had to choose one. Now for the BBCSO part, let's see all the sections separately. First, we have the strings. The strings are divided into long, short, pizzicato and solo strings. So if I open the long and I enable the, the, the first violins, you will only have the long articulations from the first violin. As you, as you can see, I went here, I edited uh, I edited the, the patch to remove all the short articulations. Why do I do this? Is that I like to mix the long and short strings separately because usually when I'm asked to provide stems, I'm always asked to separate the long and short strings. And this is probably a good habit to have when, uh, when working. The whole of the template is based on BBCSO Pro. It works with BBCSO Core as well. But if you have BBCSO Pro, it's the mix tool that is used as the only signal in the template. I didn't mess around with the, with the other microphones. You are obviously free to do that but that's the way it is set in this template. If you look here, you can see that the expression and uh, modulation, so CC1 and CC11, are already have a default value. If we go at the beginning of the template, at bar 1, you can see that each track has what I call uh, init 
event where I've set for each instrument the modulation at 80 and the expression at 100. So that's also what I use to, to balance the template. So the template is balanced with itself. The sections are balanced with each other based on modulation at 80 and expression at 100. How do you switch between these articulations? Well, it's really easy. I've made expression maps for all of the patches that are in the template. And if the, the expression maps are of interest to you, they are provided separately in the same download as the template itself. But they are also, let me open it, they are also saved inside the project itself. Now, if I look at the short strings, let's take the cellos for a change. You can see that here we have only the short articulations with the, with the correct expression maps. If I open the instrument, here I've done the same as I did with the long articulations, except that I've removed all the long articulations. All right, so this is for the, uh, the, the strings. Also, I've used tracks for the pizzicato. Uh, uh, an extra track. I, I don't like to have my pizzicato mixed in with the, with the short articulations because usually the, the, the pizzicatos, uh, or do you say pizzicati in Italian? Maybe. Uh, I, I don't like to, to mix them together because usually I will change the volume for the for the pizzicato articulation and I will use a different reverb uh, reverb and compression setting. If you have a BBC SO Pro you have the same here for the for the solo strings for the for the what they call the, the leaders. Okay so again same thing as before long, short, and pizzicato. You may be wondering what is this live folder at the top? Well, when you work with the template, as you add instruments, it will start to, to be long and you will find yourself scrolling a lot. So usually what I do when I, when I, um, when I activate, uh, I enable an instrument and I use it, I move it to this live folder here. And you, you will see why in a second. It just allows me to close the unused ones and only have a clear view of which instruments are in use, uh, in use at the moment. Okay. So this is for the strings. It's not really complicated. Now, if we look at the woodwinds, I've sorted them into main and auxiliary. It doesn't respect any kind of convention. It is just, again, the way that I like to work. For me, the main woodwinds are flute, oboe, English horn, clarinet, and bassoon. And in the kind of music that I write, for me, all the others are auxiliary, like piccolo and uh, the bass flute or the contra bass clarinet. These are not instruments that I use very often. You may notice that oboe here, it's oboe one, and the oboe here, it's oboe two. So let me just activate them both, you know that in BBCSO you do not have oboe 1 and oboe 2, you just have one oboe. So what I've done here is that, let me put them in the live folder so that we can 
close these, we have more real estate. The obo one is the default BBCSO obo uh, out of the box with mix two. As you can see, it's as I said before, it's already at expression 100 and dynamic 80. The Obo 2 is made from the same Obo, but if you look down here, I've transposed it by minus three semitones. And in Cubase here, I transposed it by plus three semitones which means that when I play the same note on these two, a different sample will be triggered, but they will still be in tune with each other. So this is to avoid phasing. The other thing that I've done, if we look at the, let me open it in the mix console, is that for the second instrument, I've just added a little bit of EQ in order to modify its tone. It's a little bit darker. You see here, I've dropped the, the, the high mids area. So this way you have two different sounding oboes with, uh, with the same instrument actually. And this allows you to have things like flute one and flute two, or clarinet one and clarinet two, bassoon one and bassoon two. At the bottom, we have the ensembles. These are provided by, uh, by BBCSO, they are part of the library, the three flutes, three, obo three oboes, and the three bassoons. All right, so now let's move to the brass. Here again, I've sorted it in, uh, in, uh, in a way that makes sense to me. First, we have the horns, and same as before with the with the woodwinds, I've again created a second instrument out of the first one. If I open it here, you see transposed by minus three semitones and transposed by in Cubase by plus three semitones. So you are sure that you are not triggering the same sample twice. And again, a bit of EQ to change the tone of the second instrument. Nothing complicated there. Again, it's, yeah, it just needs to, uh, to be done and I've done the job for you. Same with the trumpets, same with the trombones. And here we have the low brass tuba, uh, contrabass tuba, contra bass, trombone, and cymbasso. So let's open the tuba. I'm just opening instruments so we have some to work with in the mix console. And you see, this is why these live folders, because if I had at this point everything opened, I would be scrolling and scrolling in my project. Now I don't need to because they are all ordered in a way that I like. And also, as you've probably noticed, everything is color coded already. And part of the template, you get my color palette here. All right, choirs. BBCSO doesn't have choirs, so I didn't add any choir patches, but I've already created the folder just to make your life easier. Percussion, I've sorted them into three categories, the orchestral percussion. Okay, I know timpani is not really should not be in the percussion and rather go in the tuned percussion folder. 
but again i mix the timpani the same way as i mix the low percussion so it made sense to me to have it there and we have the auxiliary um, percussion like the different toys and tambourine and we have the metals like the cymbal for example and let me open a bass drum you will see why shortly i will take also the toys because i need to show you how these things are routed tune percussion more of the same we have the main percussion here so for example we have the celeste as you can see here on the left the celeste also has its expression map all really all the instruments that can have an expression map in bbcso are mapped here in this template and we have the auxiliary again these are those that i use a bit less than the others feel free to <laughs> you know to, to shift these around and to make the main folder really the, the things that you use the most band well there are no guitars and bass and and a drum kit in bbcso but again i've created the folders for you since same we have uh, i use synth in uh, in contact you you know the things like uh, by heavy city for example like the the what they call it the uh, mosaic bass and mosaic plugs and stuff like this so i made a contact folder and i have uh, others folder that's for omnisphere and serum and massive and whatnot so again the folders are here for your convenience and lastly and this is mostly for the for the trailer people out there i have a special effects one with the rivers and risers and downers whooshes hits and so on and so forth just in the booms here to show you that you can really do a lot with bbcso i created a sub hit out of a bbcso patch so i just took the bass drum and now if we go look in the mix console i've used the eq to remove the highs of the of the bass drum and boost the the lows a, a little bit then i've used the cubase pitch uh correction uh, plugin to transpose it by minus 12 semitones so whole octave lower and i've added some of the cubase reverb try it you will see you have a fantastic sub hit made out of this bbcso bass drum let's put it here the other folders obviously are empty because there are no sound design patches in bbcso so that's for the that's for the the track part of the template so really what you can do is just open the template activate the instrument that you want and start playing and uh, it just works here we have a few cycle markers they are four bar markers uh, i use them as visual guides or when i want to set my cycle here so this again very simple it is again just the way that i work and i do this in all of my templates so i thought it would be a nice touch to do that for you now the routing we have <coughs> two mix console the first mix console is for the instruments so here you see that we have our two sketch tracks the the piano sketch and the, the chords from the chord pad we have piano and the violins those are all the instruments that i have activated before and as you can see the faders are already set i told you that i I balanced the template to my taste and this is uh, 
this is where I did it. So you can see that the PZ4, for example, is minus 12 dB compared to the long articulation that is only minus 6 dB. And this is for, a, for an equivalent expression value, which is, as we've seen, at 100 by default. Another thing is those secondary instruments. Here I've also panned them a little bit more so they, for example, the oboe one doesn't overlap with the oboe two. This is not a mistake. It is done on purpose. And so, yeah, here you will only see in this mix console the instruments, nothing else. You don't see the output uh, buses, you don't see the subgroups, you don't see the reverb, anything. It is just so that you can work in a way that is not cluttered. Now, if I open the second mix console, here it's the exact opposite. You only see the sub buses. So for example, if I look at the, the long violins one, you see here at the top, they go to string longs and the short cellos, they go to the string shorts. And this is where you find these sub buses for all of the instruments. The percussion, percussion one is all the orchestral percussion, percussion two is essentially just the timpani and percussion three are the high percussion and the toys and the tambourine and the sticks and that kind of stuff and metals, self-explanatory, it's metals. I have separated the woodwinds into two categories. I have the woodwinds with a reverb set at minus six and these are the what I would consider the, the the woodwinds that are part of the orchestra. You know, they, they are sitting in position and they, they are blended with the orchestra. But sometimes, for example, I like to have uh, in a track, I want to have a solo clarinet at the, uh, at the front or that is a bit louder than, than the rest for, for an exposed pas uh, passage. And what I will do is that I will route this specific instrument to the bus called woodwind solo. Solo strings go here, the piano goes to keys, obviously. The sketch, everything that you add to the sketching part at the top of the template, you should definitely route it to sketch. So this way, when you want to mute your sketch, you go here and you are done. You only hear your track. You can see that there are way more buses than there are categories in BBCSO. For example, we have guitars and bass and drums and synths and sub and special effects and impacts, and we even have three or even four. Wow, feeling generous today. You have four auxiliary buses if you have some stuff that you need to route, but none of the categories fit, like, I don't know, voiceover, dialogue, or yeah, some crazy instrument, like uh, what is a crazy instrument? I don't know, but you get the idea. You already have these buses ready. They are all, all of them uh, from the orchestra already have a sound to the reverb. We will look at the reverb in a second. First, each of these buses, they are routed to an output bus here that is called SUM. And this sum bus, I use it for one and one purpose only. I wrote everything to it. And before I go into the mix bus, I do my gain staging here. I try to hit zero VU at, um, at, uh, at the sum stage. So I know that whatever I feed into my mix bus, especially if you are using analog emulation plugins that are expecting a level of zero VU, everything that will come into the mix bus will be at zero VU. So it goes from the instrument 
to the sub bus, the sub bus to the sum, and the sum goes to the mix bus, and the mix bus goes to the master. Let's look at some of the plugins that I've used. They are Cubase plugins, so you should have them already with your Cubase installation. By the way, this works with Cubase Pro and Pro only. It will not work with Cubase Artist or Element. It, the template has been tested from Cubase 10 to Pro to Cubase 12 Pro. So I know it opens and it works. Here I've, on the mix bus for your convenience, I already put an EQ and just to have a bit of color, because I like to have a bit of saturation, I've added this, uh, this uh, tube compressor, but it won't do anything to, in terms of compression. I've just used it for this drive button here, so I can drive a little bit of saturation before going into the master bus and the master bus, same, I've already put an EQ for your convenience with a, with a low cut at 25 hertz. And I've also put the Cubase limiter already on the master bus. As you can see, it's already plus 3.5 dB, so you can hear what you are doing while working, but still it won't be destroying your ears. Reverbs, this is one of people's favorite subjects. I have two reverb tail buses. We don't use any early reflections in BBCSO because the, the room it was recorded in is great and the mix to signal that is used uh, in this template already have early reflections baked in so i only use these as tail reverb and actually at this moment uh, only the tail one bus is used so first an eq to, uh, to avoid uh, uh, for your reverb to add mud to, to, to your mix. So there are already a few notch here and uh, low cut and high cut. And then it goes into the built-in Cubase reverb, it, uh, the one called Revelation. And See, pre-delay is at zero and the balance between early reflection and tail, it's tail at 100%. So you don't have any early reflection in the reverb. It is just to give this nice sheen at the end of a note. And again, that you can change, use your own reverb, uh, change the, the, the EQ of your tail whatever. You can even have a second tail. So for example, if you are mixing in uh, a drum kit and synths and guitars, and you also want them to, to have a reverb, but a different one than the, than the orchestra, well, you can, because you can go here and you can do a sound to the tail two bus. So this is just made, you know, so that you can work faster. And there is also a delay bus. If you are a fan of using delays, plugins are deactivated, but I've used also the, the default uh, Cubase plugins. So this way you are not relying on plugins that I own, rather you are relying on plugins that you have. All the sub buses uh, start at minus 4 dB, so it leaves you a bit of room to move the faders up, because if you start at zero, you don't have much to go, and minus 4 is a sensible default value for me. Before, we were quickly talking about early reflections, so 
there is a third mix console here with basically nothing except buses that are called ER string longs, for example. So imagine that you are blending in this template another library that is drier than BBCSO and you want to bring it to the level of, uh, of BBCSO, you can insert your own ER plugin. Here, let's use, uh, what is the name? It's reverence, I think, the convolution reverb from, uh, from Cubase. So for, for example, here I can add one for the early reflection and I can go to the instrument I added. Let's pretend that this is another instrument. I can do a send to the ER string longs to the value that I see fit. And these ERs will be uh, the, the output of these ER buses will be the same as the instrument. So for, for example, the, the string longs go to the string long sub bus and so will the early reflection bus. And I think that's it. So yeah, if you have any question, don't hesitate. Ask, uh, ask a question in the comments below. I hope you will have fun playing with this template so that you will write some great stuff with it. Again, the template is entirely free. You don't need to pay me anything to download it at bbcso.nicoshule.com. Just the, the, there is a price box. You just input zero dollars in it and click on download and you can get it. I've used this system because I was looking for a file host that I would not have to pay and that would let me host a, a file that you can download. Now, if you want to put something else than a zero in the in the checkout box, if you want to, to buy me a beer or a coffee or a new house, feel free to, to do it. Your support is always very much appreciated. Now, with that said, stop watching videos and go write some great music.